One of the themes you'll notice while watching sailing videos is problems with anchoring. And it's usually not the boat we're watching from, because most of the sailing channels we watch feature experienced crews who've already made mistakes and learned. Instead, it's them jumping out of bed to address another boat who is dragging their hook. And sometimes things get so tangled so fast they'll have trouble trying to explain to us what happened. So here's a quick crash course in anchoring terms and concepts to help you understand what's going on. Being good at anchoring isn't hard, but most people underestimate the skills, equipment, and knowledge needed to do it well. You won't see it coming, but once you've established a pattern of doing it poorly, you'll never sleep, perpetually waiting to have to jump up on deck, fire up the engine, and reset the hook. Because back on land, you'd never think to worry that you might wake up to find your house has drifted into the freeway. That would be bad. There are three parts to every anchor system. The anchor itself, the road, which is the line that connects the anchor to the boat, and the cleat on your boat that you tie the road to. All three of these pieces can ruin your day if not properly equipped or deployed. Most of the cruisers on the sailing channels we watch have a similar setup. Choosing an anchor is easy nowadays because there are so many great designs. Pro tip, and if you want to be banned from any online forum, post something like, hey, Bruce's suck, or hey, Rockna's suck. Modern anchors are all pretty fantastic. Most cruisers simply pick one that is of the recommended size for their boat, buy a spare of a different type, and a larger one for storms. So. Now you have a shiny new anchor that you can just run up on the bow and chunk it in, then open up the bar, crank up the tunes, and what could possibly go wrong, right? Wrong. Don't be that guy. On the sailing channels, you'll notice the road will usually be all chain, or mostly chain. And they'll have literally hundreds of feet of it. Because the tried and true equation from all the books states to pay out seven feet of road for every one foot of height between the bow pulpit and the sea bottom. And in stormy conditions, you need ten. Since you might be anchoring in water up to thirty feet deep or so on average, do the math. The amount needed is slightly less if you're using chain, but most boats still carry more than they think they'll need. Chain is more effective at keeping the anchor set because of something called catenary. Catenary is the curve the road makes through the space between the anchor and the boat. If it has a large curve and actually just sits on the bottom for most of that distance, then the force pulling on the anchor is always horizontal and digs deeper. Since chain is heavier, it tends to want to sit on the bottom. With this setup, as long as the anchor is set in the type of dirt it's designed for, like sand or mud, It'll never budge. Well, as long as there are no sudden perpendicular forces. One major culprit here is if the wind changes direction. If the crew wants to prepare for that, they can actually put out a second anchor which is set in a different direction. Another cause comes from other boats anchored in the vicinity. Remember that boat from earlier? Yeah, that guy. Now, I don't want to name any names. <coughs> George. His anchor is not set, and if it drags over our boat's anchor or road and pulls it up or to the side, He'll foul our anchor and send us drifting along with him. This is more likely to happen the more road our boat has paid out, since there's a bigger trap to catch someone's dragging anchor. The last part of the system is the attachment point on the boat. Sailors who use line as a road worry about the line chafing as the bow moves up and down. Since our boat uses chain, we don't worry about chafing. But, because chain is so strong and absorbs none of the shock forces of the boat moving up and down, we worry about the boat being damaged, or the cleats being ripped from the deck. This problem can be solved with something called a snubber. A snubber is simply a length of rope which takes up the strain on the chain and acts like a shock absorber. You'll often see it as a bridle, connecting the cleats on both sides of the boat. Well, there you have it, the typical anchoring system you see in your favorite videos and how it works. Now that you're all learnt and an expert in stuff, go ahead and blow up their comments like a winner with something like, hey, nice catenary, seriously. But before that, like and subscribe below, and if those sailing channels got you confused about anything else, let me know. Seriously, George.